Okay, guys, we've got an algebraic expression today which we're being asked to solve. Now, the expression is going to require us to use natural logs. So I'm just going to get straight into the problem. And um, while I'm going, I will basically explain any of the, like, the index laws that I'm using on the way. But the first thing I'm going to do when I'm presented with this particular problem is factorize it by this 16x. Now, the reason I'm going to do that is because what I'm going to try and do is take the 16x across to the other side. So if I um, factorize by 16 to the power of x on this side, what I'm going to end up with is 1 plus 20 to the power of x over 16 to the power of x. And that's going to equal 25 to the power of x. Now from here, guys, I'm going to take that 16 to the power of x and divide it by both sides. So I'm going to get the 16 to the power of x, and I'm going to divide both sides by 16 to the power of x. And on this side here, guys, they're going to cancel out. And I can rewrite this expression as 1 plus 20 to the power of x on 16 to the power of x is equal to, now I'm going to use the uh, distributive law on this particular one, which states that if we have a over b all to the power of n, this is equal to a to the n on b to the n. Now I'm going to be working backwards in this case. So here I'm going to say this is equal to 25 over 16 to the power of x. Now on this one here, guys, I'm going to do almost exactly the same thing. I'm going to say this is 1 plus 20 over 16 to the power of x is equal to 25 on 16 to the power of x. Now I can simplify this one here because 4 goes into both. I can say this is 1 plus, now 4 goes into 25 times. 4 goes into 16 4 times. And this one here, guys, is... And here I'm just going to leave this as it is for a second, guys. Now from here, guys, what I'm going to do is to acknowledge that that 25 on 16, they're both square numbers, both the numerator and the denominator, and I'm going to rewrite this as 5 squared on 4 squared, and that's to the power of x. Now from here, I'm going to use exactly the same index law as up there, and I'm going to apply it to this step here as well, and I'm going to have 1 plus, what do we have, 5 over 4, x is equal to, now I'm going to take the 2 outside, so I can have 5 over 4 to the power of 2. Now all of that is to the power of x. Great. Now what I can also do is if I have my another index law, which is a to the power of n, all to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n times m, like that. So I can read, and I'm going to apply that to this step here. So I can rewrite this particular line as 1 plus 5 on 4 to the power of x is equal to 5 on 4 to the power of 2 times x or 2x. Great. So I'm going to get everything onto the same side of the equation. I'm just going to take everything to the right hand side. So I'm going to have 0 is equal to 5 on 4 to the power of 2x minus 5 on 4 to the power of x minus 1. So from here, guys, I don't know if you can recognize, but this is what we is known as a quadratic trinomial. Well, it's in a quadratic trinomial form. And what I mean by that is this looks a lot like this. 0 is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let a equal 5 on 4 to the power of x. And from there, if I do that, I can rewrite this expression as 0 is equal to a squared minus a minus 1. So you can see here I have my quadratic trinomial. Now from here, it's very difficult to factorize this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my quadratic formula. So our quadratic formula for a quadratic equation, which is in this form, we have x is going to be equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. 
Now, this is for a quadratic trinomial which equals zero. So that's very important here, guys. This must equal zero. So I can apply the quadratic formula to this equation here. And what I get is I get that A is going to be equal to the opposite of B, so it's just 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is just one negative 1 squared is just positive 1, minus 4 times a, which is 1 times c, which is negative 1, all divided by 2 times 1, or 2. So this is going to equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 4, so the square root of 5, all divided by 2. So, we have two options. A could equal to 1 minus the square root of 5 on 2. Or, A could equal to 1 plus the square root of 5 on 2. So, what I'm going to do, guys, is... I'm going to substitute my a value back in. So if for memory, guys, a is going to be equal to 5 over 4 to the power of x. So I'm going to substitute that back into these equations. Now, I don't know if you guys are aware, but this particular expression, a, if a is equal to 5 over 4 to the power of x, this is always going to be greater than 0 for all values of x. So this particular expression, 5 over 4 to the power of x, regardless of what x is, 5 over 4 to the power of x has to always be greater than 0. So what that means is this particular expression here does not exist because we can't have this number, which is going to be always greater than zero, equaling a number which is less than zero. So we have to continue on with this particular expression. So we have 5 over 4 to the power of x equaling 1 plus the square root of 5 on 2. So what I'm going to do first, guys, is this is where the natural logs come in. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So I'm going to have the ln of... 5 on 4 to the power of x is equal to ln of 1 plus the square root of 5 on 2. Now from here, guys, I'm going to use my logarithm law where if I have ln of a to the power of x, this is equal to x ln a. So I can take the power out the front as a coefficient. So I'm going to apply that here, where I'm going to take that x, and I'm going to put it out the front here. And that's why we're going to use natural logarithms. It's because it takes the unknown out of the power and puts it as a coefficient. So I can have ln, oh, sorry, x ln of 5 on 4 is equal to ln of 1 plus the square root of 5 on 2. Now, what I can do from here is I'm going to divide both sides by ln of 5 on 4. So I have x is equal to ln of 1 plus the square root of 5 on 2 divided by ln of 5 over 4. Now from here, guys, we can just clean it up a little bit using a few logarithm laws. The first one I'm going to use is the quotient rule, which basically says that if I have the natural log of um, a fraction, a over b, this is equivalent to the natural log of the numerator minus the natural log of the denominator. So I'm going to use that on both the numerator and denominator here. And I get x is equal to ln of 1 plus square root 5 minus ln of 2 over ln of 5 minus 
ln of 4. And there is our simplified solution. So I hope that video helped, guys. If it did, give it a thumbs up. I've just gone through the method today as quickly as possible. I know a lot of you guys who are watching this will have other places to be. But again, if the video helped, give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see any particular um, questions answered, please leave them in the comment section below. But until next time, guys, just keep enjoying your maths. Keep banging your head against the wall. Eventually, the wall will fall down. But yeah, it's all about banging your head against the wall.